Transatlantic divergence may sound like a steamship from the roaring 20s, but it's been the trade of the year as the euro's tumbled against the dollar. Many are now poised for it to be the trade of next year as well, thanks to the central banks of Europe and the US. But they should be cautious. On Thursday, the dovish European Central Bank is indeed poised to move rates even more deeply negative to extend quantitative easing beyond next September to buy more bonds or possibly to do all three. In a fortnight's time, the US Federal Reserve's widely expects to take the exact opposite approach, raising interest rates for the first time in almost a decade. It's living divergence. The conclusion's obvious. Buy the dollar and sell the euro. If the US is tightening and the eurozone easing, what else could you do? Well, this chart shows the value of the euro, that's the uh, blue line there against the dollar, and against that in red is the additional yield that you earn from holding German rather than US short-dated bonds. Even as German yields followed European monetary policy into more negative territory, US yields have been rising in anticipation of Fed action. And that's uh, driven down the spread there into, deep, in, into uh, deeply negative territory. That's over on the left axis there. Uh, German bond yields are now almost two percentage points lower than in the US at the two-year level. Well, so far, so obvious. But everyone knows this. As Shortview pointed out yesterday, bets on the dollar rising could still get a bit more crowded. So perhaps there is a bit more to go. After all, the euro's only just coming close to the levels that it hit back in March. The problem is with the fundamentals. Monetary policy in the eurozone seems to be working. There are still threats, of course, with Ukraine and the Middle East on Europe's doorstep and domestic political dangers never far away in the troubled eurozone. But look at the economic data and the region does look like it's improving fast. Today brought European manufacturing figures showing the fastest growth since last summer. Banks are again lending to companies and individuals. Unemployment's dropped to the lowest since early 2012. The monetary base is growing just as fast as it did from the Euro's launch back in 1999 up to the start of the crisis year of 2007. And if you look at core inflation, stripping out the volatile energy and food prices, it's back above 1% still below the 2%, close to 2% target, but well away from the deflationary threat. At the same time, GDP is rising faster than the sclerotic eurozone can expect in the long term. Now, all of that suggests that after this week's easing by the ECB, the talk in the eurozone might soon turn hawkish. At the same time, the US recovery is starting to look a bit more challenged. Today's manufacturing data in the US, that's the blue line there, uh, is showing the sector contracting at the fastest pace since 2009. I should say below 50 shows that manufacturing's contracting and above 50 shows growth. This is red line is the eurozone. It does start look as though the strength of the dollars starting to hurt the internationally exposed American manufacturers at the same time as the weak euro is starting to help the uh, European manufacturers. The domestically driven US services sector still looks okay, but higher US inflation compared to Europe can all be explained in the, at the core level by the faster rise in US rents, which is hardly the uh, basic building block for a robust economy. And none of this means that the dollar's about to crash. But after rising a third since last summer, sorry, since summer last year against the euro, an investor would need to think that the European recovery is weaker than the data suggests, while the US is stronger in order to bet on the dollar having another big gain in 2016.